What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for December 8th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Before we get into today's episode, I want to first start off by saying, probably not the first, but happy Hanukkah to everyone out there who celebrates. That started last night at sundown. I wish you a very happy and, and enjoyable one. We met. We were talking about the Stanley Cup yesterday, too, and I said I wasn't sure how they did it and I was right like if they would have just continued to add eventually the the Stanley Cup would be huge but there's five bands that they kind of rotate out there's some smaller bands that celebrate some of the original uh, winners of the Stanley Cup but the big bands on the bottom what they do is they change them every 13 years so ultimately 13 years worth of winners and then there's like it's anywhere from like 50 to 65 years you could be either way The next ring to be retired, uh, and then they go and display them in the Pro Hockey Hall of Fame, is going to be after the 2029-2030 season. And that's important, and I bring that up only because that's the Flyers ring. So after that season, if the Flyers do not win another Stanley Cup, they will not be on the Stanley Cup for the first time in a very, very long time. Um, uh, The Maple Leafs are also in the same boat with that. Uh, they'll still be on it for the, I, I don't know what they call it, but like the older era, they're on those rings, but they will not be on for the modern era. So um, I know somewhere Ed Snyder is not happy about that. So hopefully the Flyers will win the cup by then. I kind of feel and think they have a good shot. I've been telling you, I've been very bullish on them um, for a long time. Uh, since the off season, and that could be wouldn't be great if they won it in twenty nine thirty, and then as one ring goes off, their name goes on again. Um, but as I always say, this is my way of making sure that uh, the facts I give you are correct. So they do retire the rings every thirteen years, and there's five or bands, I guess they call them, but there's five of them. So the Flyers one is due to be retired. After the 29-30 season, um, hopefully they win one before them. Recapping yesterday's question of the day, pretty much a slam dunk. Uh, Everybody, with the exception of one person, uh, voted for the 2018 Villanova Final Four team as the best. That one single person voted for the 2016 um, I will say there was a large contingent of, and I guess I have a lot of Temple and St. Joe's listeners out there, uh, a lot of uh, who cares, Villanova sucks, uh, and my favorite was who gives a flying fuck. So there you go. You either like Villanova or you don't. Uh, but the 2018 Final Four team was uh, by you, the listeners, voted as the top Final Four team under Jay Wright. Uh, The who gives a flying fuck might be my favorite quote, though. Uh, Thank you again for participating. Hopefully Sunday, because the Eagles played late. I'm trying to work out the last-minute kinks to get the text and the the voicemail line set up. So fingers crossed that I can get that rolling out next week and really increase the the participation here. Uh, But there will be another question of the day later in the episode. Just a reminder, no new Back to the Future, uh, but be sure to check out last week's episode on Eric Lindros. I am going to start switching that to an every other week schedule. <clears throat> Excuse me. The streak now continues of my cough and throat clearing, uh, but mainly to give myself some time to really put effort into growing everything and not really just throwing things out there just for the sake of throwing out. Uh, but be sure to go back and check out the archives. That is Back to the Future with a PH wherever you get your podcast. All right. Today's the last day to get your gift cards over to the Maddie and Dixon Community Cupboard for their uh, holiday drive. Really looking to just make some uh, little kids Christmas. Um, so the only way to do that now is to probably at this point get over there and drop them off. Uh, They will take cash donations. Um, If you want to focus on the food drive, that is fine as well. Uh, I will be making a trip over there. Uh, So many of you have Amazoned me uh, food and donations for them, and I thank you for that. There's still a week left. You know Amazon, it's like next day delivery. So if you still want to get some of the things on the list, it's posted on my social media. I've been kind of uh, reposting it every couple days. Uh, So get them over uh, next week. They will, if 
if you want to wait uh, and do it the week after, they will be there on and off that week. But we're, we're putting Friday as the deadline. But if you need details on how to get the food to me, please hit me up offline for that. If you're doing the reverse advent calendar uh, with me like I do with my kids, today's item is ground coffee. Uh, so they're lo just looking for some ground coffee to get donations for. Uh, today's 25 Days of Kindness Act is, it's Friday. Why not bring in, and if you're catching this in time, stop off at Dunkin' Donuts, pick up a box of Joe, bring in some coffee for the office, grab a dozen donuts or a, a thing of munchkins. Uh, buy lunch if you can swing that, like if, if you're a, a boss and you can just do something nice, some snacks, just and, and maybe not today, but maybe next week, uh, bring in some Christmas cookies. I don't know. Just bring in something nice for the people in the office to enjoy, uh, especially this time of the year. It was always fun. Um, I, I, miss, I do miss working in a school uh, because there was always somebody who was like, oh, I, I have extra Christmas cookies and just put them in the teacher's room and just um, so do something nice and, and just bring in something for the people in the office. Maybe organize a potluck. That was my favorite even here at the, the, the school I'm at now. When I was working in the office, like it was great. Like everybody brought in a dish and it was just a great celebration. So do something, bring in some food and celebrate for the office. Food is always the great equalizer when you're bringing people together, I feel. But that is today's act of kindness for our 25 days of kindness. All right, Sixers in town tonight to face the Hawks. I don't know since it's a Friday night and I think this is one of those... Um, tournament games that are added on based because the Sixers didn't move on. So I don't know if they're going to have the the tournament court down tonight or what. Uh, but big game for them against the Hawks. Uh, I did want to go into a little bit more on Joe's night the other night because it just really was a historic night for him. Uh, it was his sixth 50th point game with the Sixers. Only AI and Wilt Chamberlain have more. Uh, it also, he tied Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with four games where they've scored 50 points, had 10 rebounds, five assists, and shot 60% from the floor. Uh, only Wilt Chamberlain, uh, our favorite Philly guy. I feel like everything always ties back to Wilt. Any kind of record in the NBA, you can always say, well, there's this is the battle for second place. And then here's Wilt Chamberlain. But he's done that eight times. Um, so what a game and, and what a what a season quietly Joe's been having. Yes, last year was the, the MVP year. But, I mean, quietly, I feel like almost maybe because the monkey's off his back, there's no pressure, there's no James Harden. I don't know. I feel like he's off to a better start this year. Uh, and he looks more, I don't know, he looks more focused. So maybe... And I'll get more into that as the season progresses. It's still early, but let me know. Do you, is anybody else noticing that? Like, he just seems more focused, more at ease, uh, and I think playing better than what he was at this point last year. But what do I know? All right, Flyers won a big game out in Phoenix. The Coyotes were red hot, and the, the Flyers beat them 4-1. to one. Uh, Carter Hart picked up his 92nd win as a Flyer, uh, tied for fifth most now in Flyers history for goalies. Uh, don't look now, but the Flyers are one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference right now. They're currently second in the Metro Division behind the Rangers. and I mean, they'd be in a, right there in the playoffs if, if things started. I mean, there's still a lot of season to go, but... Hey, man, it's been fun. I've been able to watch them more this year than I ever have. And the Flyers are, eh. like I said, jump in on the ground floor now. Now is the time. I've been telling you. Um, they're in action tomorrow out in Colorado against the Avalanche. Um, but I've been telling you about getting on the ground level with the Flyers. Pick up some Flyers gear from Philly Goat. They have the Quaker sweaters from the 30s, which are pretty cool, I think. And they were inspired by this podcast. They have other Flyers gear if you want that. Philly, Sixers, Union, Eagles, you name it. They have Philly-centric stuff. And the time is running out to get your orders in before the holiday, before Christmas. If you want to wear the, the ugly Christmas sweater like I'm going to for Christmas dinner... You got to get that order in today so you can get it delivered on time. Uh, while you're there, use the promo code Jim Montgomery, 10% off your order. Uh, all one word, but time is running out. There's like two days left, really. Um, so a little over two days, but don't wait. Do it today. It's Friday. 
Let's go. Get it done. Get the Quaker sweatshirt, which is probably going to be the next thing on, on my list to get. Um, I feel like I'm on a regular every three week to a month schedule where I'm ordering something from Philly Goat. But, I mean, that's because I believe in the pro- quality of the product. Uh, but go to Philly Goat. Do some last-minute Christmas shopping. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. Um, a lot of talk about Scott Boris yesterday and his comments about Bryce looking for a uh, contract extension. And I, I think it's because there's not much going on with the Phillies right now. It's a big story. I'm anxious to hear what Bryce has to say. I mean, he is five years into a 13-year, grossly underpaid. I, I mean, I will like he's already outplayed the the contract. Um, so I don't know how they do it. I think the Phillies will will hook him up with something um, that that not only will help the team but also uh, help Bryce because Bryce is. I mean, been to the World Series, been to the playoffs now twice. Uh, he's won the MVP. Uh, he's big in recruiting guys to come here guys want to play with him so i mean throw him a bone i don't know more on that as it develops again like that was the big story on all the sports talk yesterday but i don't know i i I want to hear from bryce because this is a different situation than terrell owens when terrell did went about it a lot differently than bryce um and again football contracts are different than baseball but Let's see how this plays out in the next couple days. All right, Eagles news. And I think a lot has been made of those guys out there with the run the ball um, signs out in front of the NovaCare complex. And I don't know. I, I, I've, we've been down this way before. There was a point in time where guys in the parking lot were handing out run the damn ball stickers. And Andy Reid was so stubborn with that. With, uh, so we've been here before. We've been saying for years to run the ball. I mean, Brian Johnson and Nick Sirianni are saying, yeah, we need to run the ball more. So, I mean, whether or not they do that, we'll see. But, I mean, I I feel this year in particular, every time they do run the ball more, they seem to do better. So, I mean, it's not rocket science. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what what happens with that. But, again, everybody's making a big deal about it. And I mean, we've been saying run the damn ball for years. Um, going back to – shit, going back to the Buddy Ryan days, we were saying run the damn ball. It's just they didn't have a running back or an offensive line to do it. So, um, with all that being said, I do want to see them run the damn ball more on Sunday night against the Cowboys. Speaking of that game – Mike McCarthy had uh, appendix surgery. He is expected to be on the sidelines. I think my favorite thing, uh, Twitter uh, status I saw yesterday was that actually Mike McCarthy not being on the sideline hurts the Eagles more than him being on the sideline because now the Eagles would have to face a competent coach. I thought that was great. So we wish Mike a speedy recovery so he can be on the sidelines for Sunday. Uh, injury news, it looks good for the Eagles. Goddard seems on track to play. Zach Cunningham seems on track to play. Um, Fletcher is iffy, but I, I think unless he is incapacitated in some way, he's going to play. Um, so things are looking good. For all of you conspiracy theorists out there, um, a.k.a. Dallas fans, uh, John Hussey is going to be the referee for the game on Sunday night. The Eagles are 7-0 and in games he refs. Uh, penalties being called, six, to, 6 for the Eagles against 21 for their opponents. Um, so the Cowboys already have their excuse built in. Uh, but again, that's only if you believe in that kind of stuff. Um, and speaking of that kind of stuff, don't forget to check out my boys over at the Clashing Conferences podcast this week. Another great ep- episode, but... Randy and Topher have been big the entire season on the whole refs and this and that, specifically Randy. So that that gives them fodder now uh, moving forward. And the Cowboys have their big built-in excuse now. Uh, but be sure to check them out. Great episode this week, as always. Clashing The Clashing Conferences podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. See what they have to say. I'm shocked at Randy's just reaction this week. I mean, I think he's playing a little bit of games with us with the reverse psychology. Uh, but go check them out. The Clashing Conferences podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. 
Okay, today we're going to go back to 2013. One of my favorite Eagles games ever. Uh, this was the Snow Bowl, Jan or December 8th, 2013. The Eagles played the Lions. Um, it was a little snow. Precipitation was expected before kickoff, but nothing big. Uh, by 11.30, I remember being in the parking lot. It was... It was snowing really hard. Like it was already sticking in the parking lot. It was we didn't have tents up because nobody expected it to be that that bad. Uh, by kickoff, the field was covered. And there was already a couple inches of snow. Ended up getting a blast of six inches of snow all during the game. Um, the Eagles ended up outlasting the the Lions thirty four to twenty. They scored twenty eight points in the fourth quarter of that game. LaShawn McCoy had 29 rushes for 217 yards and two touchdowns. The 217 yards still is an Eagles single-game rushing record. Nick Foles threw and ran for a touchdown. Deshaun Jackson was just on the radio last week talking about the touchdown pass that he caught uh, because there were some people on the Lions who thought he was out of bounds. He said, how could you even tell? Nobody knows where the out-of-bounds was. Uh, he may have stepped out, but it was just an ultimately a fun fun game to be a part of uh the defense forced three fumbles it just was uh again fun nobody expected six inches of snow uh the eagles improved to eight and five uh that 2013 team won the nfc east went 10 and six and ended up losing in the playoffs the first round to the saints uh it was just an overall disappointing game uh but again, one of my all-time favorite games to be a part of. It's not often, like, it's one thing to sit through the bitter cold. It's another thing when it's 100 degrees. I've been sent through games with that. But there's something different about snow and just how much fun it was and seeing guys do snow angels. I mean, there was, there was snow was in the crowd, too. So throwing the snow up, just a whole lot of fun for that game. But on this day, back in 2013, it was the Snow Bowl. The Eagles beating the Lions 34-20 in six inches of snow. Unexpected snow. Uh, always my favorite kind of snow, too. Everybody talks about this, that my favorite kind of snow is just unexpected. Uh, but it was the Snow Bowl on this day back in 2013, which leads us to today's question of the day. Over the course of the history of the franchise, the Eagles have played in quite a few weather games. Um so it was hard to kind of pick the top four here. But the question of the day is, what is the most memorable Eagles weather-related game of all time? Was it the 1948 NFL Championship when a blizzard hit Philly uh, to the point where Steve Van Buren uh, didn't even set an alarm clock because he thought the game was going to be canceled and Greasy Neal had to call him and say, yo, dude, you got to get down here. The game's on. The Eagles were giving out free tickets if you helped shovel off the, the field. Was it the infamous Fog Bowl when Buddy Ryan took the Eagles out to Chicago and right before halftime the fog came in, you couldn't see a thing throughout the second half of that game and then all of a sudden the fog disappeared? Was it the pickle juice game when it was extreme heat down in Dallas uh, and to open the season in 2000 and the Eagles all drank pickle juice and ran the Cowboys out of the building? Or was it the 2013 super, uh, Snow Bowl? You let me know what is the most memorable Eagles weather-related game of all time. Did I miss one that should be on there that's not? Uh, you let me know. Comment wherever you're watching or listening to this. Send me text messages. Uh, if you hit me up on social media, TikTok and Twitter, at Jimbo, Jimbo underscore Mont. If you're on uh, Instagram, at Philly Jimbo. Leave me a message on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, wherever you can. Um, if you're listening on the Spotify app, the it'll be right there on the app where you can respond. But what's the most memorable weather-related game for the Eagles? Was it the 48 NFL Championship, the Fog Bowl, the Snow Bowl, or the Pickle Juice game? Let me know. This should be a fun one today. All right. Finally, we're going to finish up with today's Philly Sports Advent Calendar. And we open up the door and we have Bill Campbell. Bill Campbell was born in the Logan section of Philadelphia. Only person in Philly history to be the play-by-play -play announcer for three different Philly sports. Uh, he started his career uh, at a local station out in Lancaster. 
moved to WIP, then moved to WCAU, also known as Channel 10, um, for as their sports director. He was the Warriors play-by-play guy from 1948 to 1966, called Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game. He was one of the few people to have sort of the 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 story and the background to that uh because it wasn't on tv there wasn't like a it was only on the radio i believe so i don't even think there's video footage of it uh, he was the eagles play-by-play announcer from 1952 to 1966 did the phillies from 1962 to 1971 he was replaced by one harry callis and at the time it was not a popular decision because of how beloved bill was Ultimately, though, I think it, it worked out very well for for the uh, the Phillies organization and the city of Philadelphia. Bill wasn't out of work long. He became the Sixers play-by-play announcer from 1972 to 1981. Uh, he was a WIP uh, show host from 1987 to 1991. I specifically remember his voice. He used to do hits even after that. Uh, just a very distinct voice. Uh, if you can, look up, do a YouTube search for Bill Campbell. I'm sure you have heard something he's done uh, before. He is two-time Pennsylvania Broadcaster of the Year. He's won the Kurt Gowdy Award, which is the equivalent of the Frick Award that the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame does. This is for the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame for announcers. So technically, he's a Hall of Famer. And, I mean, he he did both teams in Philly. uh, And he probably could have gotten away with moving out to San Francisco when the Warriors moved. But he didn't want to uh, leave Philly. Plus, he was the Eagles play-by-play announcer during that time, um, as well as the Phillies. So go figure. Uh, they named uh, the Philadelphia Sports Writers Association has named the, uh, an award after him, the Bill Campbell Broadcast Award. Uh, Merle Reese was the first recipient of that. He is an, an inductee in the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame, uh, the Legacy of Excellent Award in 2005. Just a Philadelphia institution in the, the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Bill Campbell, one of the, the best broadcasters in Philadelphia sports history because he was able to do it for three different sports. Uh, he did the Warriors, Eagles, Phillies, Sixers, even had a show on WIP. But like I said, be sure to like do a Google search because I guarantee if you're from the Philly area, you've heard his voice before. Uh, he used to do things on Channel 10, I remember too. Uh, but Bill Campbell is today's Philly sports advent calendar gift of the day. Don't forget to vote in our question of the day. What's the biggest, the most memorable Eagles weather-related game? Is it the NFL championship in 1948, the Fog Bowl, the Pickle Juice game, or the Snow Bowl? All in honor of the Snow Bowl, which happened on this day in 2013. Eagles beat the Lions 34-20. LaShawn McCoy setting the Eagles single-game rushing record with 217 yards. Be sure to check out my boys at the Clashing Conferences. They're doing a great job over there. And you, I'm, sh- I'm telling you, Hussey is uh, going to be the 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 referee. So it means the Eagles are going to win because the NFL wants to set things right for all you conspiracy theorists out there. See what I did there? Uh, but it's Friday. It's going to be a little bit warmer this weekend before the rain comes on Saturday. So try to get out there and enjoy it. Happy Hanukkah again to all of those who celebrate. Go check out Philly Goat. You only have two days or so left to get your orders in by Christmas. Use that promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Friday. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.